G'day beer lovers! Today I'm going to do a cooking video. Yes, I don't do too many of them, do I? Yeah, no, I don't normally do cooking videos. Well, I'm going to make some fig marmalade. It's one of my favourites. You know, I've got this fig tree. It produces a lot of fruit every year. And after a while you get sick of eating it. So, you've got to find some other use for the figs. And I've come across this great recipe for marmalade using figs. Yep, I'm going to show you how to make it. Let's do it. He's VB and he lives in Perth. Making super videos for all his work. His channel is great. He's a good mate with Bella. Fell on the hands. G'day, beer lovers. It's our old mate again here. VB Ed. The white plastic bags which I've tried to my fig tree are there to deter the rainbow lorikeets from visiting. They absolutely gorge themselves on my figs and I've got to do something about them. Sometimes the bags work, sometimes they don't. There is a lot of scale on these figs, but it's all right. They don't really damage the fruit. You just you just flick them off and give them a good old wash before you cook them. Okay, I've managed to get a good bag of figs. I'm going to combine it with a few other bags that I've been picking recently, and I've got enough to make me probably four to five jars. Now, some of the figs are a little bit mushy. But uh, mushier the better, because I find that the mushy figs are the sweetest. You're going to have to organise some bottles before you start. You're going to have to sterilise them. What I do is I wash them out in detergent in soapy water. Then I put them into the oven and put it up to 180 degrees and just leave them in there for at least 10 minutes. Okay, the first thing you've got to do is give the figs a good old wash. Make sure that you wash all the, all the little scale insects off the fruit. For some reason, the figs are very susceptible to scale, but they don't seem to damage the fruit that much. Other than that, fig trees are very hardy. They'll grow anywhere. Um, one of the most useful trees you could grow in the garden. And also they're very, they're very fast growing too. Find a pan and cut the fruit up into little, little portions. So I've got, a, I've got one of these. It's like a frying pan. It's got a big lid on it. I don't know what you call these sort of pans. You could use a saucepan if you want. I'm using this, this is what I use to cook my jam. I cut the figs up into tiny portions because once it's all cut up, then you're going to mash them with a potato masher. Right, I'm mashing now. They're quite easy to mash. After they're completely mashed, that's when we add the sugar and the other ingredients. So once you've got to that sort of consistency, this is when you start to add the sugar. Now normally I just add two cups of sugar. It's up to you how much sugar you want to add. Now this is a big brew. I haven't made a big batch like this. I put a lot of figs in here. So for this batch, I'm actually going to put three cups of sugar in. So you add the sugar in. So that's one cup, I'm going to add another two cups after this. And then you've got to mash it in with the fruit. Okay, I'm going to put another two cups of sugar into this. Now 
Normally, I would then add one lemon. But this is a fairly big batch, so today I'm going to actually use two lemons. Now we're going to be using two parts of the fruit. We're going to be using the skin and we're going to be using the juice. Okay? So we're going to scrape the skin directly into the mixture like that. This cuts it into little strips. I'm going to use a grater in a minute. It's going to be a lot quicker. But the skin will actually go into the mixture a lot finer. It's not as good as the strips. I, I try and do as much stripping as possible before I get the, the grater out. We're going to add one spoonful of cloves. Okay, we're now going to add three quarters of a spoonful of cinnamon powder. And we're going to add half a spoonful of vanilla essence. We're also going to add a bit of salt. And now just juicing the lemons. Just pouring in the last bit of lemon juice. So I've got two lemons in there. Just juice the two lemons. Now I'm going to combine all this, all the mixture. Now before it goes on to the oven, I add one cup of water. Now I know it's very liquidy now, but we're going to be putting it onto the stove for 45 minutes on a medium heat. And towards the end, a lot of this water would have boiled away. So I'm not too concerned at this stage by how liquid it is. Okay, let's put it onto the stove. So we're just going to let that bubble away on a medium heat for 45 minutes. Notice the texture of it here, it's just very runny. When it gets gluggy, that's a sign it's finished. If you overcook it and you bottle it, you can't get it bloody out. It's all, it forms like a bloody rock. Last year was the first year that I actually made fig jam. I overcooked it, I overcooked it to buggery left it boiling away for two hours. Yeah, there was no moisture left. So I just put the jam in the jars, put them on the shelf, and then when I was ready to eat them, and when I was ready to pull it out and spread it on my toast, it was impossible to spread. It was just so hard, because I hadn't bashed it properly either. And I put too much sugar in it as well. Absolute disaster. And when I was cooking, it was really, it was really weird because the kitchen got invaded by bees. Yeah, bees get attracted to the smell of cooking figs. Luckily, so far, there's been no bee invasion in my kitchen this year. So far. Touch wood. I think it's ready. See that consistency there? See the thickness? That's really what you need to get it to. Okay, let's bottle it up. Okay, we're now bottling up. Now, in the end, I actually cooked it for an hour. I just couldn't get the right consistency after 45 minutes. Now, if you take the jars out of the oven after they've been sterilized, they can be quite hot. So, be careful. I've let them cool for a bit before, before putting my fingers on it. Oh, that is hot. But they're still very hot still. Right, okay, now, what you need to do now 
is before you seal it, just put a bit of oven paper on it. Adds, a, acts as a bit of a seal between the, the jar and the lid. Oh, that's hot. Oh. There you go. One jar. Voila! Finished. Managed to get what's that? Six, seven, eight jars. That's my biggest batch to date. What am I going to do with all this jam, you must wonder? Well, I think I'll be eating it. Eating it myself, putting it on my toast, but I'll be giving a lot away to friends. Yeah, I think they'll make great gifts. <laughs>